Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Marley and I have been up in the mountains for the past couple days. We've been working on a few different projects as usual. Today we're going to be discussing the Winchester Model 70. And this is in 35 caliber. This is manufactured in Korea by Avonix for Winchester. And it's put out through Gamo slash Daisy Corporation. Um, these retail for anywhere between seven and eight hundred dollars, and so this is what I would call a budget large caliber. And I'm not calling this a big bore because it simply does not put out that kind of power um, to what I consider a big bore. This is kind of catered around the 81 grain uh, pellets, um, although we have been using 110 grain NSA slugs. Um, but I'll get into detail with this gun. I'll show you some of the stats on it, some of the features. We'll look at the accuracy. And I have been using this gun for a couple of months. I have hunted with it. I have hiked around with it. And so I am, as usual, very familiar with what I like and what I don't like about this gun. The overall length of this rifle is just about 42 inches and the weight comes in at 8.8 .8 pounds. And so this is not a small rifle size wise and it is quite heavy with a scope you know you're approaching just about 10 pounds and so it is a big rifle you know it's what you expect for a classic style um, large caliber but it is very well made very nice metal work um, i really like the the stock on here the styling now this rifle is shrouded and it houses a 21 inch barrel it does have an integrated moderator, um, which I'm unable to remove. This is actually epoxied right onto here. And so as far as getting this off, I'm not exactly sure what would be involved if you guys wanted to mount any kind of aftermarket type moderator. And to, to be honest with you guys, I couldn't tell you um, how effective this is simply because I can't get it off. Um, I'm sure it reduces the noise somewhat um, but I have a feeling the inside of this is probably hollow and it, it really for the most part I think is mostly cosmetic. This gun's not terribly loud but it's definitely not backyard friendly. But we will do a decibel reading so you guys can get somewhat of an idea. The Model 70 is outfitted with a barrel band um, which is going to sec secure the shroud to the air tube. Um, which I definitely like, you know, there's no, no flex or anything like that. This seems to be a very sturdy barrel system, which you guys know I'm a definitely a fan of. And that's definitely going to help, you know, keep the gun's point of impact. Um, you know, bumping around, anything like that, uh, barrel band definitely helps. Just in front of the 320cc air reservoir is your fill port. Um, this has a little cap that turns here and that's going to access the hole um, to be able to insert the, the probe here. Um, you guys know what I'm going to say, I, I can't stand these things and I wish um, manufacturers would stop doing this. Um, these, there's no reason to have a, a probe. Just go foster. And the reason I say that, these things get lost, the o-rings go bad. And guess what? The gun is completely worthless. And then on top of that, you got to go and purchase one of these separate little adapters to go on here. So guys like me that have 50 guns that we got to bring out in the field and work with, got to keep track of all this crap. Moving down to the breech area, we've got a side lever here. Now this whole action may look familiar. It does look very similar to what you'd find on the Avonix Rainstorm 2. Um, I have had one of those guns. This is very similar action. Um, the safety, pretty much everything is the same. A very nice side lever. Um, being 35 caliber, you know, it does have a little bit of cocking force here, but the pins and everything look pretty sturdy and I have been using this for a, a good couple months and haven't had any problems with the cocking or anything like that and I really like the safety on this gun it's very easy to access um, with your thumb to get this on and off uh, very simple and 
I really do like the trigger on this. It is fully adjustable. It is a bit stiff, um, but once you shoot the gun for a while, you get kind of used to how it breaks. It's got a really long, like, second stage here, and you definitely can change that. This is a fully tunable uh, trigger, um, but the first stage seems to be pretty good. Um, it's kind of grinding through the second stage. But I think it has smoothed out since I've been using this gun. And I think with a little bit of adjustment, um, it could definitely be improved. Up top of the breech is an 11 millimeter dovetail. Now I've got the BKL rings on here and I had some problems um, with some of the other rings. They just weren't fitting right. Um, I found the BKLs um, seem to fit perfectly. And so if you guys are gonna get this gun, I definitely recommend going with the BKL. Um, that's one thing I would have liked to have seen them incorporate is a pick reel on top. Um, you know, this is just kind of old school way of, of mounting, and I don't really like it. That's one thing that I wish they would have kind of changed with this gun right off the bat. Now, just some back of the breech here is your hammer spring adjustment. You would have to remove the action from the stock. Um, to be able to get to that, but you can tune this gun. Um, if you wanted to tune it up, get a little bit more power, um, obviously you're gonna sacrifice shot count. As it is now, this gun is getting about 12 shots per fill, and that's to 230 bar. And the gun seems to be pretty accurate at that power level, at least with the 110 NSAs. Uh, but you could squeeze some more power out of this. The Model 70 is not what I would call backyard friendly. It is fairly loud. I really couldn't tell you how effective the moderator is on this gun, but I can give you an idea of how loud it is. Um, for instance, a fairly quiet backyard friendly gun is somewhere around 70 decibels, maybe a little bit higher. Um, this comes up over 120 decibels. And one decibel is quite a bit. There's uh, quite a noticeable uh, change in tone. Um, these decibel meters are not scientific at all, but they definitely give you a baseline for what you can expect. Now that we've taken a look at the specs of this gun and gotten kind of a closer look, we'll take the gun over and we'll shoot a group at 75 yards. I have been pretty pleased with the accuracy I've been getting out of this and I think you guys may be impressed. From a 230 bar fill, you're gonna get two full magazines, which is 12 shots out of the Model 70. I'm shooting the 110 grain NSA slugs on the low side of 730 and on the high side of 745. And so that's a pretty nice bell curve and I think that really contributes to the accuracy of this rifle. Here's six shots at 75 yards. I'm extremely impressed with this. The 110 grain NSA shoot extremely well out of this gun. You know, this is a very good group. I can't imagine that the 81 grain pellets would do any better. I would have liked to have tried them, uh, but I, was, I wasn't able to find them anywhere. And so I did have quite an assortment of 35 caliber slugs. And so I, I really found the 110 grains uh, seem to be the most accurate. I really think this gun, you know, is pinpoint accurate. It's definitely accurate enough to hunt out to 
75, you know, 100 yards. Um, for hardy animals, you know, like a coyote, a rock chuck, um, beavers, probably even a, a smaller size uh, pig would be a good candidate to hunt with this gun. But I'm impressed. The accuracy is definitely there. I think with a little improvement with the trigger, um, it could probably even be better. Marley and I did take this rifle out. We did some hunting with it on numerous occasions. And one evening, we went jackrabbit hunting with this gun, and I was able to take down a good-sized jackrabbit at 40 yards. Um, and let me say, 110 grains uh, makes a big thump on a jackrabbit, a big hole. And there's no doubt this thing, you know, has capability of taking down much larger animals, um, such as coyotes, um, which is probably primarily what I would use this gun for. Um, you know, hunting out to 100, 100 yards, maybe a little further, um, I think this gun would be quite effective um, at those ranges. But it is a, a nice gun for carrying. It definitely did its job as a hunting rifle. So the dying question is, can I recommend this gun? I really think I can for the price point. Um, you know, these retail between seven and 800 bucks, depending on where you purchase them from. And I think that's a pretty good deal for this gun. It is pretty well made. Um, Avonix is known for making um, pretty good quality guns. And that's the case here. You know, it's got a good finish on it. I really like the side lever. I like the safety. I really like the stock. I, I like the stippling on the grip and the forend area. Um, and it's a comfortable, you know, enjoyable gun to shoot and cycle. I, I really like those metal magazines. They're, they're well made. They're easy to load. Um, one thing you know I really would like to see them change is incorporate uh, uh, some threading here so you can change this moderator out because I have a feeling this is just a hollow tube in here. I'm sure it quiets it down a little but I, I have a feeling an aftermarket moderator would probably do a much better job and I really just do not like the um, mounting system here for your scope. I really think they should have gone Picatinny rail. Um, you know, with where we're at in the industry now, there's really no reason not to. Um, I think that definitely would make an improvement to the gun. Um, and it is a heavy, large gun. Um, if you're going to carry this, you're definitely going to want to put a sling on it because um, it does get heavy. You know, especially with a scope and a camera like I have on here. Um, but, you know, you can adjust it. You can uh, tune this up if you wanted to squeeze a little bit more power out of it. But I really think, you know, 130 foot-pounds with the 110 grain uh, slugs, this gun is extremely accurate. Um, I'm very impressed with the accuracy out of it. And you really just, you can't beat it for the price point, I think. Um, but with all that being said, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys think of this gun. If you guys have any experience with these products, I'm curious to know. I really appreciate Gamo, you know, sending this to me to be able to review for you guys. I know we haven't been on the best terms in the past with some of my other reviews, but hopefully this makes up for it. You know, it really is a nice gun and it's definitely something you guys can look at if you're looking for something for... Um, medium sized game um, this would definitely be a candidate for that but I appreciate you guys watching and we'll talk to you soon